Hi everyone, today is October 19th, 2019, and it's the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger, and the narrative for Duel Links is we've had these constant ongoing PvE events that were repeated. I was going to say, you know, we're in for something new, and there hasn't been a ton of new content going on, and all of a sudden on Wednesday, Wednesday night specifically, we were hit by news of the nerfs, so that is updates to the semi-limited and limited list, as well as dual skill rebalancing. And this all went down really cool because Wednesday morning, I decided to tweet out the podcast question of the week, and that was putting you in the um, shoes of the game designer. So I asked what nerfs should be put in place in the meta right now, a snapshot of the problems in Duel Links meta, um, uh, ranked meta, I mean, and at night, the uh, the nerfs came out. So we're going to compare, basically, it's a, it's a really fun exercise and really cool how it went down, but we're going to talk in conjunction, podcast question of the week, and the actual nerfs. That's the main content for this week. We have some, uh, we have the returning PvE event, the Rise of You Bell event, two new cards from that event, and yeah, that's about it. Esports. We'll talk about esports too. But this this quite this uh, episode primarily will be about the nerfs. Um, I will be talking by myself today. Doug uh, is in Florida, and Florida and storms don't go together well. So he is um, out of commission. Uh, he's dealing with the storms. So uh, no deck of the week this week. It'll just be me. Um, I am dealing with a cough. A, a non-illness cough, just a cough, so uh, if I have to pause, and hopefully that won't interfere with the audio, and um, it goes without saying that this podcast goes on so as long as I'm in business, so please um, you know, search this podcast, the Dual Assessment Podcast, subscribe wherever you are, uh, it's free now, I mean it's always been free, but we don't do any Patreon stuff anymore, but uh, you know, tell everyone about us, participate in our weekly questions tweets whatever my complaints about gems whatever but okay that's out of the way let's talk about my week in dual world so pvp really before the nerfs it was very just slotty da we don't have anything to do if you can get to king of games you can't get to king of games type situation and all the events are pve events of course so uh, there was the minimum three duels a day situation to get Previously with the Kalen Kessler event, it was with the skill chips. So I I made sure to do my three duels a day to get those skill chips. I'm almost at, you know, enough skill chips to get a new reroll. But in this uh, new event with the um, new bell currency, I don't know what it's called, Dark Souls or whatever. Um, I'm still doing the PvP to get those events, those uh, currency. But I'm really just between Legend 2 and Legend 1 right now. I can't find a consistent deck to play. Fortune ladies haven't done well. Um, right now we're right before the nerf, so everyone's just playing their OP decks. And really, I'm not facing Dark Lords because they all hit King Games ready, but a lot of Neos decks, people are just running out there. And um, it's difficult to play because I don't really want to play six stamps either because six stamps are nerfed, so I don't really feel like playing a deck. Like to hit King of Games with a deck that is the old version. I want to, if I were to do it, I would like to play a new version. Unfortunately, the balance between experimentation and losing a ton of games is not in my best interest right now. And I'm just at legend one. So, um, you know, I have room to lose. I don't really, I can't derank at legend one. So it's, um, it's kind of a tough balance. I might just put my three games in and wait for the nerfs in a few days and see what, I, I might just resort to six Sams, maybe. I think they're fine. And, I don't know, Fortune Ladies just don't feel good right now, but I'm not sure what happens after the nerfs, of course. I did um, I did start buying... I reset the box because I got my copy of Alistair and Invocation. Those are two cards that I feel have a lot of weight going forward, and I might just try to buy the box again to get another Alistair or... Switch over to the Curse of Dread box so I can try to get a Plague Spreader Zombie. If Vampires come back, Vampires come back, 
and then I get synchro options. So we'll see what happens there. Let's turn to esports this week. So two of these tournaments happened before they set the ban list in, and one of them did afterwards. So we'll, we'll take we'll take a look at that. Duel Links Meta Weekly number ninety four. This happened before the nerfs. I think the day of the announcement. And um, you know this is the last snapshot of this meta because what they do is they um, they put it they put the nerfs in retroactive. I mean in advance. So last Duel Links meta with this Dark Lords and Neos uh, being OP. Neos took over Dark Lords here in this um, for the first time. I think I think Dark Lords are always the one A to the one B. Now Neos took over in this tournament, though. You still see plenty of those decks. The so first place, negative one beat down Dark Lords. Um, this one actually has is a little interesting because it includes Dark Lord Amb Am Dusk, which is the horse, and this is a card you might see a lot more moving forward. <coughs> so a lot more moving forward because um, this recycles a spell or trap in the graveyard, and then you could use it again. It's kind of like Ixshell or Nastin. And, um, you know, with the nerfs going on, this might be a card you might see more moving forward. So, this, even though the nerfs were not in place at the time, um, you have this card in here. So, you might see more monster diversity. There were always a toolbox monster deck, so you might see more monsters to, to increase the play of the spells and traps, like to recycle them better, I guess. But anyways, um... This does have Hey True Nade World Legacy Clash, one of each. They're both, um, they weren't semi-limited at this time, but uh, one of each here. And uh, three copies of Dark Lord Contact, of course, the Sanctified Dark Lord, two copies, three Banishment of the Dark Lords. Second place, Bendy Tendi, a beatdown Invoked Neos. Pretty much the classic um, Invoked Neos in its current form before the nerfs go in place. A Lava Golem, 3 Alistair, 3 Keeper of Dragon Magic, of course, 2 Flip Flop Frog, 1 Bacon Saver, 2 Neos, 1 Invocation, 3 Neos Fusion, 2 Econ, 2 World Legacy Clash, and of course the back, uh, the extra deck, you have your Brave Neos, Coxitis, and Kaliga. 3rd place, Mayoko, Light and Dark, Silent, Gravekeeper. So this is an interesting deck. Um... You know, the lights are the um, Silent Magicians, the darks, plenty of level 4 Dark Gravekeeper spellcasters here. And, um, yeah, there's not much to say about this. There's like a toolbox, kind of. So there's one of each Gravekeeper, one Spy, one Recruiter, one Descendant, one Headman, one Heretic, and one Spiritualist. Um, minimal stuff, Silent Magicians, two uh, non-level ones, one level 8. Three Necro Valley Throne for draw. Three Necro Valley. Three World Legacy Clash and two Treacherous. Extra deck is just Quintet Magician and Supernaturalist. So I guess whatever fusion, you're, you're only granted one fusion because Spiritualist is going to go fuse. So I guess you pick what, whichever one you want. You only, you only have two choices anyways, but you could bring back the Spiritualist, of course, and get another um Get another fusion play out, but um, kind of like super late game going on if that's the case. And then third place, Yosei Lock Beatdown Invoked Neos. This one is interesting for including Tackle Crusader, which is a decent card. Um, it's a card we might see going forward with the nerfs going into place, but it's basically a graveyard card you use, and it's an earth, so it lets you use uh, Invoked Magellanica if you want to use that card. Okay, so that is Duel Links Meta Weekly 94, Battle Phase 19. This also happened before the nerfs were announced. A little more diverse of a top four, but it's kind of the same representation, Dark Lord and Neos. We expect these things to change moving forward. First placed Frost with Sealed Tombs Stromberg. This deck we saw before, um, it got first placed in some thing weeks ago, but Stromberg deck... Notably with the card Grand Maju de, de Aiza, which has uh, effect attack and defense equal to your remove from play cards times 400. So, obviously Stromberg banishes 10 a turn. So this is a free, like a 
Level 3, normal summon, 4,000, 4,000. So, really good card. Um, but basically, if you're not familiar with this deck, 3 Lava Golem, 3 Psychic Wheel Dealer, 3 Glyph the Phantom Bird, 3 Grand Madre de Isa, 2 Princessin, 2 Pumpkin Carriage, 2 Cosmic Cyclone, 2 Econ, 3 Golden Cross Castle of Stromberg, 2 Glass Slippers, and then the text. The text against this meta. 1 Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, 2 Debunk. Those are cards that are pretty good against this old meta right now. Um, second place, Ash Blossoms Beatdown Fusion Neos. This is that kind of hybrid version that we saw in the Taiwan series. So it relies on Magicalized Fusion and the Dark Hex Sealed Fusion. The Dark Hex Sealed Fusion really makes this deck because it is built in polymerization as well as a substitute material. So this lets you make two cards Dark Cavalry which requires Dark Magician, but then your Hex Fusion becomes a Dark Magician. And you fuse that with Neos, because that's the only warrior in the deck. And then also, Millennium Eyes Restrict. So, the Dark Hex Sealed Fusion becomes Relinquished, and then you use any effect monster. You can use your Bacon Saver if you want. So then, otherwise, you know, you've got your three Keeper Dragons of Magic, uh, Lava Golem, just for good measure, and your Neos Package. Pretty much. They also use the regulation of tribe as their kind of meta counter card. Third place and and Rook. Uh beat down Dark Lords. Typical Dark Lord deck. Um a two World Legacy Clash. It's kind of the issue of World Legacy Clash. It was just such a good back row that it was just put into any deck, and that's kind of what led to what happened. I'm trying not to talk about the nerfs and spoil them, but it's kind of what the precedent is going on. Third place, Junior Crazy, Sealed Tombs, Six Sams. Very typical Six Sam deck. Um, you know, three Anishi, one... No, three Kizen, one Anishi, one Kizaru, three Fuma, two Legendary Secret, two Six Armor United, two World Legacy Clash, one Dojo, two Dimensional Prison, two Dual Wield, one Return of the Six Samurai. Dimensional Prison's a fine card, against all those graveyard protections, and it's probably going to see more play, so you might be like a three of in future decks. Alright, so then Divine Pro Circuit Tournament Trio 3. This tournament is a team tournament with three players on each team. Um, one thing that they did interesting is that they put the ban list in place, so this is our first view of some tournament decks that are putting in the ban list in place. Let's take a look at some of these decks. First place, Team Haram Boys. I see what they did there. Anyways, Helian Boy, Raw, and Yasser. Balance Triamids. Um, it's pretty much a Triamid deck. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It, it does have Shadow Imprisoning Mirror as a tech. Still a dark tech. Uh, very useful, I guess, against, uh, you know, Alistair. Alistair is still around. Dark Lords are still going to be around. Even Six Sam's. No, six Sams, yeah, yeah, Six Sams, uh, Desperado, if they're still around, so, um, Shadow and Prison Mirror might not go away in the new meta. Here's Beat Down Dark Lords, Raw played that deck, and you see some modifications with the ban list in place, because Dark Lord Contact and the Sanctified Dark Lord were hit, there's more room for other back row cards, Floodgate, 2 Cosmic Cyclone, they even have Into the Void to help draw cards. It helps discard cards too, so Into the Void might be a staple for this deck moving forward. And of course, like I mentioned before, Dark Lord Amdusk is in the deck for that extra recycle. And we have Sealed Tombs Invoked Magician Girls. So Invoked are going to get splashed around to other decks outside of Neos. And the Mag Magician Girl packages is 3 Chocolate and two, 3 Berry this deck does rely on concentrating current because um, I don't really know why. I guess I guess um, oh, it's for Coxidus, I think, because Coxidus has a really high defense, so it's going to hit directly for a really high attack. Second place team: Naughty Dolphins, Osama, Shinigami, and Mujigarwa. Uh, Master Destiny Desperado deck. So Desperados are going to change, and this deck. Looks like this. Three Desperado Barrel Dragons, one Twin Barrel, one Temperance, three Blast Spider, one Cryule. There you go. 
one time wizard, one Dekoichi, one misjudge, two cup of ace, one dark bribe, one debunk, three rebirth of Parshaf, one ultimate providence, and of course, uh, avenging knight Parshaf. Balance triamids again. So this is another triamid deck. This one doesn't have shadow imprisoning mirror, but it has uh, some Canadians, I guess. I mean, just a good trap cards. And then balance six Sam's. So a new way to play six Sam's. It does include two power of the guardians to fill up the spell slot. And also a double edged sword technique to fill up a trap slot. So less monsters in six Sam's now. Third place team Chidori, Lightning, Shark 09, Double 09, and Zangetsu. Destiny, Draw, Dark Lords. Um, a lot of monsters in this deck. Oh, Destiny, Dark. Destiny, Draw, Jinzo, Dark Lords. Jinzo's in here. <coughs> Jinzo's in here. You've got. You've got a lot more monsters. Um, one Desire, three Ixshell, one Superbia, one Morningstar, three Nastin, one Tetsalapaka, one Amdusk, and one Ukobek. So I guess they filled it more Nastin. And that makes a lot of sense. You got three Ixshell, three Nastin, and one Amdusk to recycle the cards that have been limited. High that binds um, Invoked Neos. This is a more diverse Invoked Neos deck because since um, Neos Fusion is limited, you have room for some other cards. And this one fits in Lava Golem. It's the Zank. That's a card we haven't seen in a bit. It's an Earth, though, so it lets you fuse into Invoked Michelonica. And it's that bounce card. One Yaksha. This is a Water Spirit. And it targets a Spell or Trap return. So this is a bounce card for Spells and Traps. And it hits for 1900. <coughs> so it's not the worst card in the world. Yep. Um, you still fit two Alistair and one Invocation. Two Concentrating Current. This is a card that might replace World Legacy Clash, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I got three of those, I guess, so I could play this card, maybe. Yeah. And then Tie That Binds Six Sams. This is a Six Sams deck that runs Necro Valley. And uh, the previous Six Sam deck balanced Six Sam with um, Power of the Guardians. You could fit in Necro Valley, too, to fill up those spell slots. So that's another way to play balance Six Sams. And then the last team, third place, Team Joggers, Zade King, Edu 16, Snifus, all known quantities. Light and dark spellbooks. So here is a spellbook deck that has made it past the nerfs. Well, they never got nerfed, but uh, Light and Dark got nerfed. And you've got your Silent Magician package, three regular ones, one level eight. Your Dark Monsters, two Alistair, and one Kaiku. Notably, no Breaker, there's Kaiku instead. Three Blue Boy, one Invocation, two Cosmic Cyclone, that's why there's no Breaker. Three Spellbook of Secrets, two Spellbook of Fate, one Power, one Eternity, one Spellbook of Master, one Spellbook Organization. Beat Down Dark Lords. This one includes two Lila, so Lila helps discard your monsters into the graveyard. I mean, it just mills your deck, so that's what Dark Lords want. And of course, they have Amdusk and three. Nastin. So they're maxing out on monsters here. Which makes sense for the cards being nerfed, of course. And Middle Age Max. Uh, this is Invoked um, Ancient Gears. So, let's see. The Double Cyclones are gone. Still have two Galaxy Cyclone, three Gear Town, one Ancient Gear Fortress, uh, Minimal, Alistair, two Alistair, one Invocation, Package and this also has the the trap card Ancient Gear Reborn, so helps your Ancient Gears come out. Or basically, it's for Ancient Gear Reactive Dragon. They don't have any of the fusions, just the invoked fusions, and they're gonna rely on Michelonica because they're all Earth monsters mostly. So one Water monster, they have a Dark monster and Alistair, so I guess they fit everything. Flip Flop Frog is the Water monster. So those are some previews of some decks, and it seems that the nerfs. I've hit the decks, but you know we're not refined yet. But the same decks are still here, though at a more creative or altered power level, it seems.
Okay, so we're done with esports now. Let's get to the main topic this week, which is about the nerfs. And uh, this is a funny story, and it's great how it all went down. I was going to work Wednesday morning, and Wednesday is the day I typically do the podcast question of the week. It just comes spontaneously. And what happened Wednesday morning was I was very early for work. And um, what happened was I went to Starbucks. I usually mobile order when I'm on the train, but I actually stood in line because I had so much time. I was so early. I didn't want to go to work early and answer phone calls and stuff like that. So what I did was I wrote the podcast question of the week while I was on the street. And I wrote, if you were in charge of balancing Duel Links, what cards would you consider moving to limited or semi-limited? Are there any dual skills that need rebalancing? And my main you know, inspiration for this, it's not like I'm a genius or I'm a psychic or something, but I thought the meta was kind of stale. We're seeing the same two decks dominate the uh, tournaments, that being Invoked Neos and Dark Lords. We're seeing Beatdown show up in every single top four. We're seeing Neos everywhere with power level of Structure EX decks, obviously. We're seeing World Legacy clash everywhere. You know, there are common themes that motivated me to doing the podcast question of the week. And coincidentally, Konami announced the nerfs maybe 12 hours after I tweeted this. I tweeted this thing at like 8 something in the morning and then they announced the nerfs like 8 something at night or 9 at night. So it was pretty cool how this went down. So let's just see. And, and it goes to show you how smart the listeners or the respondents are here. Because they kind of predicted everything. They they saw, they they have a pulse on the meta. They know what's going on. They play at the high level. And our listeners here are really smart. So let's see what, you know, how it all went down. So Pro Bench Warmer, the podcaster of the Duel, um, Duelist Inner Monologue, says, Dakini to Unlimited. Cyber Angels need to be playable, and the meta is not quite slow like it was when she last ran loose. So this, this kind of hits at it. I'm not going to spoil what gets unlimited yet, but this kind of gets at Cyber Angels. Cyber Angels do have something happen to them, but not what you would expect, probably. Marble Scrabble. Dark Lord contact into semi, just just so they can't play along with True Nade. So that Marble Scrabble gets a point there. Femi Bazue. I will remove all the limited cards and let Meta Chaos remain. So, obviously this doesn't happen. But this opens up a question of whether there should be an unlimited format for Duel Links. Maybe have a season where there's an unlimited format. Um, I don't know how often the TCG does it. I know it's an option, but the highest level are they have their ban list and everyone pays attention to the ban list. So I would assume it's not the most competitive format if it's a format at all. But in Hearthstone, they have Wild. Um, it's a little different because they rotate cards out in digital card games. So, you know, a lot of cards are gone. But um, in Duel Links, I mean, in Yu-Gi-Oh, everything would be valid. So it's hard to say if a wild or unlimited format would work in this app we have. Brutal Rampage 69. Neos Fusion to 2. Sooner Thing Done to Light and Dark. I don't know, it's too prevalent a skill. Rebirth to 2, and remove the penalty on restart. Rebirth, I think he's he's referring to powerful rebirth. Um, so Brutal Rampage 69 hits two things. Got two right. And this is something I, <coughs> I never would have predicted, but he was right. And Sirius Star Spark, uh, also known as Bereft the Land, says Contact or Ixshell to 2, maybe both. Don't need infinite search and stupid draw power. I'd also free Cyber Petite Angel. So Sirius, Star, Spark, or B Ref Lands got them both right, sort of. Uh, sort of on the Cyber Petite Angel, but yeah, he did call it, I guess. But anyways, these are all our responses. And then I tweeted some, uh, I tweeted some reactions after the nerfs were announced that day. And I got some responses there, too. Um, let's see. Carlos 
Solus, uh, C. Solus R says Sylvans, Masked Heroes, Vampires, Zombies, and very especially Cyber Angels are back to the menu. Rip, Despacito, Dark Lords, and everything that ha- that depended on Brave Neos, Light and Dark, and World Legacy Clash, mostly Six Sams. So, those are some reactions. Um, let's see. Juliano Fernandez says, Thanks God. He likes the nerfs. Elf Lou Boo says, I called World Legacy Clash. Man, oh man, a lot of people owe me an apology. Can't wait to bring this up. Yeah, that was one of the ones that had to happen, in my opinion. You know, it was just, it was everywhere. Um, yep, okay. So, those were, that was what, what went down on Twitter. A very cool thing that happened. Uh, the timing was just impeccable, really. I, I don't know what to say, but... Let's get to the actual skill rebalances uh, first. Dual skill rebalances. Yeah, let's talk about the skills. Beatdown. So Beatdown was always unlimited. You could use it every turn. As long as you had your level 5s or higher, you could boost them. Now you can only use it once per duel. Clearly broken. Every A lot of tournaments just ended with their top 4. Every deck using Beatdown. Didn't matter what they were. Um, and... I think, I mean, the, the clear replacement to beat down is Tie That Binds. Tie That Binds, solid. You get 300 on each character, I mean, each monster at most. Um, and you can use it every turn, that's the main thing. And uh, I guess you don't really have to get over, you don't have to get 900 attack for each monster, but you get 300, and as long as that's enough to go over your opponent's monsters, that's fine, right? And... I think decks might run more of those back row, back row wipes, like uh, Hey Trunade, Anti Magic Arrows, Shin Zhang Hu, maybe. Um, the decks that still use Beatdown, I mean, they want to swing for that turn to clear the board or to kill the opponent, and they might just use those lockdown cards uh, to do it. And another card that we are seeing is Concentrating Current, so that might factor in to boost a monster really big one turn to make up for that lost damage. So, you know, beat down. It's just too easy to get those big monsters out, of course. That's why I was nerfed. Um, I'm fine with it. I don't... I mean, I played six Sams, beat down six Sams. That's really what affects me. But, you know, not really... I don't really play Dark Lords, so I don't play Blue Eyes or anything that requires really big... I don't really play boards of huge monsters. I have, like, one or two, but... Uh, I don't really care too much for beatdown, um, but of course, you know it was just so consistent uh, with the big monster decks. And I mean, switching over to tie that binds, you're gonna have to know which characters use those. There's only a few characters that use tie that binds, and the usage of beatdown characters will obviously go down. But I don't, I wouldn't say the skill is dead. You could just clearly play those back row wipes. So light and dark also got hit. Light and dark now activates. When you lose a thousand life points, you could still use it twice per duel, though. So clearly, anything with a thousand life point lost, you're probably gonna run Cosmic Cyclone just to. Cosmic Cyclone is just a good card, um, especially on an empty board. Well, if you're empty board, you could just clear their back row with no penalty. You lose a thousand, and then you use your light and dark, and. Um. I think Spellbook of Fate. No, that doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, I guess Spellbooks can still use Cosmic Cyclone because um, Cosmic Cyclone is not a semi-limited card, and um, Spellbook of Fate could still be used to banish monsters, to swing for lethal, and things like that. Um, so yeah, um, definitely a, a deck moving forward with Invoked. Invoked wasn't hit. Uh, The Invoked package itself wasn't hit, obviously, because um, it's a new card, but Alistair the Invoker is still a dark monster. There's still light monsters like Silent Magician. Those cards are still fine for light and dark. Um, Just no Cosmic Cyclone is going to be there in the back of your head, I guess. Master of Destiny. So this card, this skill, was nerfed instead of you previously had to run five different coin flipping monsters in your deck. Now you have to run seven. And 
Despacito decks, uh, aka Desperado plus Neos decks, are gone completely, I would say. Um, why are they gone completely? Well, Neos Fusion got nerfed to semi limited, and Cup of Ace is already semi limited. And I don't know, maybe you could play them without Cup of Ace, but I think you want Cup of Ace, especially since you want seven coin flipping cards. So here are some options. Fiend Comedian is always just a one of. It's always going to be in a coin flipping deck, maybe. Cup of Ace. There's your two draw. That's your pot of greed, basically. So you have to have Cup of Ace. Two copies of Cup of Ace. So there goes Neos Fusion. Desperado Barrel Dragon. That's the card you typically want three of uh, in your deck. Maybe two. I don't know. Arcana Force Temperance. That's your Sphere Karibo in the deck. Pretty good card. Misjudge, this is a card that we saw creep up now. It's 1800 attack and it negates an effect, so a pretty good card too. Time Wizard, uh, Time Wizard's a gamble. I wouldn't say it's a card you have to include, but it was popular in decks. Twin Barrel, um, Twin Barrel is a very good card. Um, it was just squeezed out when cards got better, and it's back. It's always been in Desperado decks. And recently we saw Cryul in a deck, and Cryul is a coin flip card. You could destroy a monster on your opponent's side of the field when it's destroyed by battle. So it's like a situational man-eater bug, but when you're guaranteed the coin flip, pretty good, right? So it's kind of like your kind of like your Sazank, your Gale Lizard, your Nightmare Penguin, Flip Flop Fry removal type card. Except it destroys a monster situationally by battle. So you're gonna have to run seven different coin flipping cards. It reduces the deck's consistency. But you're going to lose the Neos package anyway, so you could fit more stuff into the decks. Yeah, that's all I have to say about Master of Destiny. Um, I mean, obviously the deck being gone, uh, the, the Desperado Neos deck being gone completely just kills the archetype, but this deck, the Desperado decks aren't gone themselves. They could still be pretty strong. Blessing of the Cyber Angel was buffed. So What happens is... After you lose 2,000 life points, I think, you can pick any of the four Cyber Angels. Previously, it was a random, it was a random skill. It's kind of like the creator, where you get a random card. This one, you actually get to pick either Edaton, Benten, Takini, or Izara. And Izana, I mean. That's really good. Um, you have to lose 2,000 life points, so maybe Mirror Wall or Cosmic Cyclones are in the decks. Everyone has Mirror Wall and Cosmic Cyclones now. And you're you're either going to pick a 6 or 8, depending on the situation. And I think you're going to pick more Dakinis, because that's a semi-limited card. So this is probably going to be the front runner for Cyber Angels being revived. Of course, Alexis also uses Master of Rights 2, which puts the Ritual Cage up. So those are the two competing skills. I think this is the better one. I think the ability just to get a free Cyber Angel Takini again. Very, very good. And of course, you have to run Mirror Wall, which isn't the worst thing in the world. It's a really good card, too. So, other... These are lesser things. Um, Fusion Reserves Roids. It is, instead of, fifth, instead of 1,800, you get 1,500. So if you lose 1,500, you could do that draw for the Roid. Um... Roids are a legendary deck, a legendary duel extraordinaire. They're very good in those those requirement duels where you have to use Cyrus and his required cards. It's done really well there, but I don't think this is enough to make it playable in our current ranked duels. Dragonic Fusion. So, same thing where you have to lose 1,500 uh, of 1,800. But there's a difference here in that... You have to return a card to your deck to draw instead of drawing the card automatically. And what this does, I guess, is you lose a card, I guess. You lose a card in your hand. I'm not really sure what this does, frankly. I mean, it's a, it's a penalty, I guess, but it's something. You're going to draw the card anyways, but you're sending a card back to the deck to draw. Yeah, I guess it's a loss of a card. Fusion time, three changes to the skill, 1,800 life points to 1,500. Again, that minor life point buff, if you will. 
return a card from the hand to draw again. You don't draw it automatically. And then there's synergy with normal elemental hero monsters where you can get one back from the graveyard. This last requirement makes this card pretty much only playable in those old school elemental hero decks, like the ones that fuse like um, fuse things into Great, Great Tornado or Gaia or um, Nova Master, you know, those decks. Um, we've seen better fusion cards now. Uh, obviously, Brave Neos is one example, but it's more of a fun skill. Those decks were never really too competitive, in my opinion. Master of Fusion. This lets you draw polymerization, and this is a much more manageable life point loss. Instead of losing 1,800, you just lose 1,000. So, obviously, Cosmic Cyclone fits in well here. And then you just get a polymerization. Uh, the, note, the note is that there are better fusion spells. Now, there are a lot more better fusion spells. Um, Magicalized Fusion being one. Gravekeeper Supernaturalist is for one for Gravekeepers. So, you know, any deck that you have to use polymerization, this is your this is your skill for it. But there are just better options nowadays to make this not too much of an impact. And then Master of Rights got a buff too. This is a very solid buff. 1,000 life point lost, and then you can draw a ritual monster or a ritual spell. It's random though. Uh, obviously, 1,000 life points lost. Cosmic Cyclone again. So Cosmic Cyclone is just going to shoot up and play probably. Um, this is very solid. It removes... It, there's still a little bit of RNG in it, but if you want to draw your Ritual spell and it works for anyone, there you go. Um, good for Ritual decks. Um, I don't think Cyber Angels would use this because they have better options. Either Blessing of the Cyber Angel or Master of Rights 2, of course. But Vendreds are still on the board. So that's an option for Vendreds. I think Vendreds use Beatdown, so this is one option for them. I don't think any of the other ritual decks have seen play since. Um, well, they have Magician of Chaos, I guess, so... Yeah, Magician of Chaos works, I guess. So those are the planned dual skill rebalances. Let's move on to the cards that were nerfed or buffed semi-limited and limited list updates. The Sanctified Dark Lord has been moved from unlimited to limited, so only one copy in a deck. And the only reason this wasn't put at two was because decks really ran two copies, and they typically ran three um, Dark Lord Contact and two Sanctified Dark Lord. And this hits, you know, obviously at the opening hand consistency, you're half as likely to get it in your opening hand. But it also, the main thing is it uses the spend or banishment of the Dark Lords. You only have three copies of banishment of the Dark Lords, and you have to use it to get this card. Um, but we're seeing Dark Lords adapt, and they're mitigating it. With They already have three copies of Ixchel. They're including three copies of Nastin. That's a card that typically saw two or one copy. And even Dark Lord Amdusk. So all these cards are recycling the, sanct <coughs> the Sanctified Dark Lord or Dark Lord Contact. It depends on the situation, of course. But this, this limit, it wouldn't have hurt Dark Lords too much, obviously. I think um, on its own, it wasn't enough because they have so many ways of getting the value back. Obviously, with this card being reduced, Dark Lords won't gain as many life points, to, so they can't spend as many life points. That's that's a big thing. Um, this is just one of a few nerfs for Dark Lords, but this is one thing, like one step, one nerf, but not a huge nerf. Um, Dark Lord Contact, unlimited to semi-limited, so two copies of Dark Lord Contact. Dark, Lord, Dark Lords are very swarmy. They put out big monsters very easily. This card made it easy for them to dispose of monsters in the graveyard and then special summon them back. Make your beat down 900 attack on each guy. And, you know, putting a card on the semi-limit list usually means, you know, it's not nerfing the card itself, but putting it on the same list as very strong spells. So, a True Nade, World Legacy Clash, Econ, Treacherous. I don't think you really play Treacherous, but all those cards are semi-limited. Hey, True Nade probably was the biggest target here. To um, to hit 
because Dark Lords are so strong. So you just hey Trune and you win the game. So Dark Lord contact to two. Again, um, you're you're gonna max out Ixshell and Nastin and then put in Amdusk. So that kind of mitigates the factor that mitigates the the loss of the spell and the trap uh, sanctified Dark Lord respectively in the spell Dark Lord contact. It's not the end of the world, but the deck is weakened. Another hit for Dark Lords. Cyber Petite Angel has moved from semi-limited to limited. Uh, so even fewer <laughs> Cyber Petite Angels to play. But the... Not really, no. Um, it gets freed. They, they are freeing Cyber Petite Angel from the semi-limited to limited spot. So you can play Cyber Petite Angel. The Kini and Machine Angel Ritual are still in semi-limited. So could run your one copy of Cyber Petite, and then you could run Dakini and Machine Angel Ritual. All three can be in the same deck. So, uh, Konami obviously knows how powerful this deck was. It was tier 0 for a whole summer, I think, and what happened is, they're giving it some power back. You are getting your best tutor card, your most flexible tutor card, and it's a 2 plus 6 equals 8. Of course, that's what made it so good. And now, um, yeah, you get you get your one copy of Cyber Petite Angel back, and whatever you do with the semi limit slot on Dakini or Machine Angel is probably a one one split. Um, is up to you. So more flexibility for Cyber Angels, which is good for them. Um, let's talk about World Legacy Clash next. World Legacy Clash is being moved from unlimited to semi limited. Um, it was. It was an auto include for six Sams. I think that was the main deck it was when it took off. And then it went into any deck, it seemed. Um, any deck that doesn't really run equip spells or anything like that. Or they really they grow in power. Like Fortune Ladies grow in power each turn. You don't really run in those decks, but any deck that really wanted a good card, this was it. And this is more of a disp- design space nerf, I think. Not a design space nerf, but we have other cards nerf. This deck was this card was just better than a hundred other spells and traps. And another reason why I thought this card should have been nerfed a long time ago is because it's a rare. It's a rare, and Konami likes to tends to nerf ends and R's. They typically pick the end and R, so it's like you don't lose your full value of getting that S R U R card. So um, this was. Very, this is something I applaud. I, I've called for this for a really long time. Uh, it's just a card you saw everywhere. I think the most... Uh, the replacement we're seeing is Concentrating Current, which is an SR. So it's a little... Fewer people have Concentrating Current, but I think it could be just as good, though. You're, and you're, you're putting up a wall, I guess. Not a wall, but they're, they're going to hit their monster into something bigger. It's like a reverse mirror wall, if you will. Uh, Neos Fusion. Let's move on to this big, big item here. Neos Fusion from unlimited to semi-limited. This is a really big deal. This card was splashed into almost every deck. Um, most notably, I think, I think Invoked was what broke the camel's back, if you will. Um, this card, it was like a whale to win card, if you will. I mean, structure deck EXs are always a whale to win thing. Um, I mean, this has always been an issue with me. I didn't like... I never really liked structured decks for that reason. But they are... If you look at the money, it's it's cheaper. It's cheaper to play this. And what happens is, this being semi-limited, it kills it from uh, Desperado Neos decks because Cup of Ace is already semi-limited, so you're not going to give up on Cup of Ace just to have a Neos package in your deck. This still works for... Um, Cyberdark Neos, though. Cyberdarks didn't really run a two of, not two of, a semi-limited card. I mean, Econ is nice to have. Treacherous is nice to have. But Cyberdark Neos is not dead yet. Um, I think, you know, every deck that could fit Neos just splashed it in. I think that was just too common a card to see. But... You know, my my thing was that money sells. Konami knows that money sells. And this is going to hurt their sales on Structured Deck EXs. Um, What value do people get 
for losing this one Neos Fusion that they spent money on. They spent real money on this card. I mean, Neos Structure Deck EX is you have to spend money or that thousand gems. What do they recoup from this? It's a digital card they just lost. They're not going to be able to... It's not a physical card. So, and you can't dust it. Remember in Hearthstone, when a card goes out, you can dust it and recoup some value. This one, what are you going to get out of this? Destroying this card, like some stones, I guess. I don't. It's not worth it, right? You might as well just keep it and hope for the best in the future, right? So, this sets a precedent about how strong structure deck EXs are going forward. That Konami is willing. They, I mean, this card has been around for over a year. They let it be unlimited for over a year, and now they finally stepped in. So, this this could this makes every card untouch untouchable. No, no card is untouchable. Your silent magician from your silent your spellbound silence ex structure deck could be next. So I don't know. This is a very daring move by Konami. That's all I have to say about it. I didn't expect this card to be nerfed because it's money, but they're forgoing the money and taking a risk of saying our structure deck ex cards are not untouchable. So I guess it's just how long of a leash. Do they have until there's declining returns? Uh, I mean, limiting returns. I think maybe there was some view of economics there. Maybe I'm looking too much into the money factor, but it seems a really big deal that they're shutting it down. They're shutting down Neos Fusion. Not shutting it down, but third box purchase isn't worth it. That's the most expensive box purchase. How many more structure deck EXs are going to be sold, and are the cards going to be that good in the future? Maybe there won't be structured EXs in the future. Or like, no money only ones, you can only spend gems, that would be more fair, right? There's a lot of you know questions that are raised here that I, that are very, it's very interesting. And then, last things, three cards that are put back from semi-limited to unlimited. Samurai Skull. Could the undead be back for Halloween? Maybe. This is the real hit that brought down Vampires. Vampires needed Samurai Skull. Now they could run three Samurai Skulls and three Gozukis if they want. And Samurai Skull was... At first, Gozuki was better than Samurai Skull. Then Samurai Skull became better because of the meta. Samurai Skull, the main difference is, obviously, defense. Zero defense, whatever. Gozuki is 800, who cares? Dark and Earth Attribute. Uzuki's effect does not go off automatically. You trigger the effect to dump a monster. Samurai Skulls goes off automatically. This lets you get by Paleozoic, Canadian, Floodgate. Those are the two main cards. And the other factor is Samurai Skull has an ability where when it's removed from the field, you can bring a monster from the deck. Uzuki's ability is if it's destroyed by battle. So obviously there's an edge for Samurai Skull here. There's mass removal options now. You get banished, you get a monster back. You destroyed by effect, treacherous, there. And that was an effect that people often underlooked with Samurai Skull. They didn't know it did that, and then you surprise them of a monster, and then you win the game. So, huge boost from vampires, and even Plague Spreader Zombie. You could dump Plague Spreader Zombie with Samurai Skull, use its ability. You could do a Glow Up Bulb too, I think. So... This opens up zombie synchro plays and vampires. This could bring vampires back. One can only hope as a avid vampire player. Destiny Hero Celestial. This is the one that draws cards or destroys a field spell. The destroying the field spell thing isn't that bad actually. It's uh, it's good if Triamonds come back. It counters Triamonds, and um, obviously what this does, removing this card from semi limited allows Destiny Hero decks to play Hey True Nate and Treacherous. Destiny Heroes, Masked Heroes were very oppressive, I think. Um that nonstop Anki play was just super solid. And Celestial lets you draw more cards, sure. It destroys field spells, sure. But frees up Hey True Nate and Treacherous. Watch out for Destiny Heroes. I think there are more tools now that Anki doesn't run wild like it did. Um, it's only 2,800, so you can't hit over 3,000, of course. 
you can always hit directly, so. I think Destiny Heroes come back as a lower tier deck, I think. This the ability to play Hey Trune is just too good, I think. Finally, Sylvan Marshall Leaf. If you don't remember the annoying fifteen hundred guy, you get disposed. I mean, he gets dumped to the graveyard. You could destroy a monster. I hated Sylvan, so that's why I say this. Um, Rose Lover is still semi limited, so you know, two Rose Lovers to run all your Sylvan Marshall Leaf. Sure, um, I feel like Sylvans won't be back. Their abilities are you know always RNG. Jericho Mushroom can dump six. There's a lot more meta protection now. You can protect stuff in the graveyard. Cards can't be targeted by things. There's just much stronger options nowadays. I don't think this brings Sylvans back. I sure hope it doesn't bring Sylvans back. But, you know, if you're willing to try it, sure. Rose Lover is still a card that helps you get by trap cards. You still have another options with Komashrumo and Marshall Leaf to clear your opponent's board. So, I'm not saying the deck is has no chance of coming back, but I think there's enough going for it. I mean, there's not enough going for it with our current meta being the way it is. That's all I have to say about dual skill rebalances and the semi-limited and limited list updates. These should be active in a few days, so hopefully we are in for a new meta. 100 million downloads. We're getting a celebration, some gifts next Friday. New artwork of Kaiba, card sleeves, and board. And a prismatic blue eyes. This new artwork Kaiba is not for everyone. It's not for me. I think he looks like a human being. And that's kind of weird because Yu Yu is a cartoon. He looks kind of like a human being here. And um, sh- sure, if you like this new artwork, I guess it's something for the artist to do. To use it in a new promo or a manga or something. I don't know. What. <coughs> but um, there was a rumor before about old boxes being discounted by half. And um, they were saying how the first few boxes, they cost half as many gems, but clearly that's a rumor. They're not coming with this 100 million download celebration. Last thing I want to talk about is the Ubel event. Ubel is back. Uh, clearly I'm bored with the event. If, you know, we've had back-to-back events that are not new and... Two new cards. You get to obtain Jaden slash Ubel, sure, if you haven't gotten him. So it's it's a new event for new players, of course. You get a lot of cards that you haven't seen before. So obviously get your Ubel cards. Three Ubel cards for farming. Uh, you could play it on the ranked, but don't because it's annoying. Evil Swarm Golem. Evil Swarm Heralds of Eggs, a good card. The rest of the cards suck, but let's talk about the two new cards. This one you only obtain... As points at two million <coughs> two hundred thousand points. It's Archfiend's Manifestation, Dark Level Six Fiend Fusion, Summon Skull, and a Dark Monster. It's got Summon Skull stats, so twenty five hundred, twelve hundred. This card's name becomes Summon Skull on the field, but it's also treated as an Archfiend. All Summon Skull cards you control gain five hundred attack. If this fusion summon card you control is sent to the graveyard by an opponent's card, special summon one summon skull from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So this ties it all together. We recently got the Synchro Summon Skull called Archfiend's Call. And that had the same stats as Summon Skull. And um, it didn't have this extra ability that buffed all the monsters to 3,000. So Summon Skulls all have 2,500. This makes them all 3,200 monsters. Um, the Synchro also had the ability where when it's sent from the field to the graveyard that you can bring a card back. So you could bring itself back. This one lets you also do that. So let's say you're running both of them in the same deck. You just keep bringing back your Summon Skulls. Um, Obviously Summon Skull doesn't have extra abilities. It's just a beater with weak defense. It was always an economical beater being a 1 tribute 2500. It was always your value play. I mean that doesn't really matter anymore in Duel Links. But having stickiness is something. And stickiness allows you to persist on the board and ramp up into a bigger play the next turn. So you have more stars for a next bigger synchro play or something. Um, I don't think the Archfiend thing really matters because we're not, we're not really seeing Archfiends outside of this. Sometimes you see Scrap Archfiend, but that's not really 
hasn't been anything. It doesn't. Sure, it it adds to the collection, the synergy of Archfiends, but this works okay with the um, the synchro. Obviously, if you have them all in the same deck, it's more stickiness. They stay on the board. Um, you might have to include Vanilla Summon Skull to make this work, but we've seen Dark Hex Sealed Fusion act as a substitute for Moxer, so you don't have to run regular Summon Skull, but you could just bring it out of the deck if you want. This is a this is just a cool card to have. I think it's it's not a card I'm disappointed in having. And Summon Skull obviously is a kick ass monster. Everyone likes Summon Skull, so there it is. The other new card we get is Legendary Maju Garzet, level eight fiend, zero attack and defense. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by tributing all monsters you control. This card's attack becomes the combined original attack of all tributed monsters. This card inflicts piercing on defense monsters. So it's 8 stars, but you can't normal summon it, so it's going to cost 1 to 3 monsters. Whatever you have on the board, it's going to gain the attack of all of them. Kind of like Union attack, if you will. And Ren Maju the Aza is playable because it's free. Not free, it's a level 3. Gains attack times all your banished monsters. This one's more of a farming card. It You're not going to see it in ranked. It's got 0 defense... You have to pay your whole board to play it. Um, it does piercing, so I guess the piercing factor is useful for certain farming decks where you don't feel like using secret pass to the treasures. You could just hit through. I don't know. Um, well, you probably just want to add the attack on this monster and then give it to your vassal. So I think this is just a farming card. It's nice to have, I guess. I already got two copies of this from Auto Duel and Ubel. Not too exciting. There's more to this. There's more to this event going forward. Um, yeah. Right, I have to stop talking now, or I'm just gonna cough my brains out. But that is it uh, for content this week. Upcoming news: Loomis and Umbra back to the gate. Dual quest mid October. We're already in mid October, it seems. So, We're waiting for this Turbo Dual Grand Prix, which will happen late October. The Weevil event: Insector Firefly, Insector Giga Weevil, and then the other. Updates for October, or ch- checking your skill lists. I mean, your your graveyards and banished cards during your opponent's turn. That's a big change. And then we'll also, I don't know if we'll get the news for the upcoming month in November, next week, maybe late next week we'll get it, but we'll see what there is. All right, so that's it for the podcast this week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for everyone for participating in that really cool question of the week. Look forward to one next week. Feel free to interact with me on Twitter. Dual underscore assessment, me at Green Ranger CCG. All the notes are on the WordPress website, the dual assessment.wordpress.com. Listen to this podcast anywhere. All right. So thanks, everyone, and I will see you next time.